Ask anybody that's seen the Final Destination movies and they'll agree, we exist in a very dangerous world. You never know when something bad may happen that could cost you your life. So how do you prepare for that, and what do you do? We're gonna save some lives today, my friends. From exploding guts to venomous creatures, we're sharing 20 unknown facts that might save your life one day. <sighs> Number 20. Whales Explode Okay, I'm sure that most of you out there have no desire to touch a dead, decomposing whale, but there's always somebody that wants to do it, so consider this our way of saving a life, or maybe two, from a dead whale. It turns out, they're pretty dangerous even in the afterlife. When a whale dies, it doesn't just stop living, well, I mean, it does just stop living, but as many people have had the misfortune to find out, the insides of the whale keep moving, but not in the way you might be expecting. After the death of a whale, the body begins generating all manner of gases inside. When those gases start to mix and grow too strong, the body will explode in a most dramatic and honestly pretty gory fashion. It's not pleasant to watch, and it's even worse to experience in person. I mean, honestly, can you imagine how bad that smells? Here's the thing. A decomposing whale is a little bit like the game Buckaroo. You know that at some point the thing will just spring into action and throw everything everywhere, but you never really know when that's going to happen. This is the reason why touching a dead whale is so dangerous. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Snakes are venomous. I know, I know. You're all smart enough to know that snakes can be venomous. I have total faith that you're all responsible enough to avoid touching random snakes you encounter in the wild, but we're going one step further. Here's how to tell which snakes are venomous. In the United States, there are only four types of venomous snakes, so if you want to spot a scarlet king snake, just look for the coloring. If the red bands touch the yellow bands, it's a coral snake. If the red band touches the black, it's a Scarlet King Snake. See, pretty easy, but that's just two specific snakes. If you want a general rule, look at the head. Non-venomous snakes tend to have rounded heads, while their venomous counterparts have more of a triangular-shaped head. The idea is that pointy things scare predators away. That's some pretty smart evolution. Our final tip only really helps if you can get close enough, and we don't really recommend that, but if the snake has two pits on its snout, you're looking at a dead one, and if your snake has thin black vertical pupils as opposed to more rounded ones, you're looking at a venomous snake. But again, don't go looking a snake in the eye. It's like cooking steak for a tiger. Number 18. Suffering Heat Stroke our bodies are specifically conditioned to react to all manner of biological problems. It's why we blink, why we sneeze, and why we sweat. So let's take a look at one problem the body struggles to cope with, heat stroke. Heat stroke is caused by your body overheating, and it's typically found during the summer months when prolonged exposure to high temperatures proves tough. When your body temperature rises to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40 Celsius, you're looking at a brutal case of heat stroke. So how do you know if you have it? Well, outside of the rectal thermometer registering your high temperature, other symptoms present themselves. Confusion, slurred speech, irritability, delirium, dry skin, nausea, vomiting, flushed skin, rapid breathing, racing heart rate, headache. The symptoms are vast, but all of them should be taken extremely seriously seriously. Heat stroke is not a mere burn. In fact, untreated heat stroke can lead to serious life-threatening conditions and even death. The condition in itself is known to damage the brain, heart, kidneys, and muscles if left to resolve in itself. If you take anything away from this video, it's the advice we've all long known. Stay out of the sun. Watch more of our videos. Enjoy! Number 17. Don't walk and talk. Okay, you can walk and talk. I mean, humans have been doing that for years, but just uh, don't do it on the phone, you know? 
It becomes surprisingly common for young people to injure themselves because they are busy using their phones. Very common, in fact. In 2010, it was estimated that around 1,500 people had to be treated in the emergency room for injuries they received while walking and using their phones at the same time. That's around double what the figure was in 2005. And it's also only the injuries that led to the emergency room. Now just imagine how high the number is today, and factor in the ones that weren't reported. Yep, we're talking some big numbers here, people. Young people in particular are susceptible to this, believing they can both walk and text at the same time. But according to studies, around 44% of those injured were injured at a crosswalk. The irony? They got their injuries when the walk light was on. Even with all the odds in their favor, they still ended up going to the emergency room because they weren't paying attention to the world around them. Take the lesson, folks. Put the phone down. Number 16. How to use a life vest. Hopefully most of us won't have to actually use this bit of knowledge, but it's still very good to know how to use a life vest. Every time we fly, we're told how the whole thing works, but do any of us remember it? Eh, probably not. Obviously, the process will vary depending on the circumstance and the manufacturer of the life vest, but it all basically works the same way. You put the vest on over your head, secure the straps around your waist, pull them tight, and inflate the vest by pulling the cord. If you can remember that, congratulations! You're now prepared for the worst possible scenario. And again, we sincerely hope that nobody watching this video ever has to use this bit of knowledge. But hey, we may have just saved your future life. So, good and bad, right? We should also add that you should wait until you've safely evacuated before inflating your life jacket. If you were to inflate the jacket before evacuating, the rising water may just push you against the roof and prevent you from escaping. And of course, you can add more air to your life vest by blowing air into the tube if needed. Seriously, guys, remember this tip. Number 15. Avoid blind spots. As we all know, driving can be very dangerous, if done incorrectly, and one of the biggest problems in driving? Blind spots. Every driver and every vehicle has a blind spot in some form or another, and there are solutions some more high-tech than others. While most new cars come with elaborate blind spot detection systems in the form of cameras or radar, every driver knows that the old-school system still works. What is that system? Adjust your mirrors! Yeah, that's it. All you have to do is adjust your mirrors to ensure that you have a decent view of every single possible angle. Because if the news has taught us anything, it's that blind spots cause some serious accidents. Even if you manage to get out of the incident unscathed, your car will be pretty damaged. Sorry to be the one to break it to you. Correctly adjusting your car's mirrors can be a true lifesaver. And I mean, a life saver. It may be something that you have to get used to, but once you are, you can guarantee that you'll be less likely to get into a serious accident, life-threatening or not. Number 14. Carry a flashlight. Today, all of us walk around with a computerized Swiss Army knife in our pockets. The smartphone has revolutionized our lives, allowing us to carry all manner of helpful goodies with us. But sometimes the old methods are the best, and that's why you should carry a flashlight. And yes, we're talking about a real practical flashlight, not the one on your phone. You may be sitting there thinking, why I paid a thousand bucks for this thing and now I'm being told not to use it? Well, yeah, because it can be useless. Just imagine for a second that some huge storm has knocked out the local power grid. Your phone may be good for a little bit, but the power will eventually die out and you won't be able to charge it. But if you had a flashlight, some extra batteries. Not a problem. Carrying a flashlight with you, whether in your bag, car, or just in the house, is more helpful than you'd imagine. In fact, you'd be surprised how often flashlights would come in handy, so consider this your free tip of the day. Carry a dang flashlight! Number 13. Don't sleep with your phone. Our phones have changed our lives in many ways for the better. 
but there are many downsides that come from being in a committed relationship with a tiny computer. The biggest, they're causing us quite a lot of harm, especially while we're sleeping. Scientists say that if you sleep too close to your cell phone, it actually increases the risk of you suffering nightmares, developing insomnia, and waking several times a night. And that's before we even mention the whole body clock confusion thing. But it gets worse. The World Health Organization has stated that cell phones are terrible for the body, often increasing the risk of developing cancer and even causing sterility. What a fun world we live in. We can't exist without our phones, and our phones are slowly killing us. Man, this has been a fun video today. The problem for us, of course, is that it's not easy to live in the 21st century without using our phones regularly. We may miss an important call or work email if we're away from it for too long. But if we're too close to it, we'll run the risk of developing cancer. All things considered, maybe the Amish have it right. Number 12. Don't mix bleach and ammonia. Generally speaking, we should all know not to make cocktails with bleach. But just in case you don't know that, consider this a very urgent PSA. Everybody listening? Gonna say this loud and clear. Please stop what you're doing. Just stop. You should never mix bleach with anything. No ammonia, no acid, no other common cleaning product. An active ingredient in chlorine bleach is sodium hypochlorite. It's found in just about every disinfectant, including household bleach. But here's the problem. It reacts with ammonia and just about every other acid. When this happens, the mix produces toxic gases, known as chloramines. If a human inhales a chloramine, symptoms can involve anything from coughing and nausea to pneumonia and fluid in the lungs. In summary, you really, 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 really don't want to inhale a chloramine. Even at low levels and for very short amounts of time, chloramines can cause all manner of nasty side effects. If experienced in very high levels, you're almost guaranteed to end up in the hospital and the chances are you won't be making it back home. Sorry to break the news to you like that. Number 11. Know your exits. It's not only escape artists and criminals that have to know the exits of a given building. Every one of us should be aware of where the emergency exits are no matter where we may be. When you think about it, it's just common sense. Just about every public building has somewhere inside an emergency exit map, which details the route that one should take to safely get out of the building. Your workplace will certainly have one and you should know it. An exit route generally consists of three parts. First is the exit access, which is, let's say, the door that leads into the exit hallway. That hallway will be considered the exit, a separated and protected route that leads you to the final part, the exit discharge. This is the door or route that will lead you to the open space outside. Workplaces are generally required to have at least two exit routes in place. Every employee should know about them because you never know when your coworker will stage an elaborate fire drill to test your knowledge. And you know, we've all seen The Office. It doesn't end well. Not for Bandit, anyway. Number 10. The Heimlich Maneuver We've talked a lot about the Heimlich Maneuver on this channel. It's generally considered one of the most invaluable and helpful skills any human can learn because it's one of the most usable. People don't chew their food, now you can be a hero. I don't have the statistics on this, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that the Heimlich has saved more lives than any of us can comprehend. To do it, it's pretty easy actually. All you have to do is stand behind the choking person, balance yourself well, wrap your arms around the waist, and tip the person slightly forward. From here, you make a fist with one hand, position it just above their navel, grab the fist with the other hand, and press hard into the abdomen with a quick upward thrust. It may help to imagine you're trying to lift the person up in short bursts. Experts advise you to perform between 6 and 10 of these thrusts until the blockage is eventually dislodged. If, of course, there's some kind of problem and the person falls unconscious, you should perform CPR and contact the emergency services. Now you're officially prepared to be a hero. Number 9. Getting Stranded 
We've all seen horror movies. Getting stranded in the middle of nowhere is just not good. In fact, it usually means you're going to end up facing off against some homicidal maniac. So how can you survive in this kind of situation? Well, here's a solution. The one thing you absolutely should not do, walk away from your car. Again, when this happens in horror movies, it usually doesn't end well, but in reality, it also doesn't end well. Often, the car is found first, before the dead body is found several miles away, so you want a better idea. If you don't happen to have any flares, grab a spare tire. If you set that tire alight, you have a makeshift emergency emergency signal. The strong black smoke will be seen for miles away, guaranteeing that somebody will see it and come to help you. Generally speaking, you never want to be lost in the middle of nowhere, but we should also acknowledge that being stranded is often not a conscious choice, unless you're… odd. Anyway, the point is that the best thing to do when stranded, if you can't call for help, is to burn your tire. It's probably not great for the environment, but the alternative is death. So, what works better for you? Number 8. Calling Emergency Services Spare a thought for the emergency service operators. Those guys work their butts off day in, day out, in some of the most stressful situations, and given that they're doing their best, it might be a good idea if the rest of us tried to help out however we could. Like calling in the most productive way, when people call the emergency services, they tend to be understandably in panic. Usually their first move is to tell the operator what happened and who was involved. But that's not a great way to start. In fact, the most helpful thing that you can do to get the ball rolling on help is to tell the operator where you are, not why you're calling. If something were to happen that would stop the conversation or the phone got cut off, the operator could send somebody over to check things out. If the patient's condition worsens, it's a good idea to call the ambulance back. But if they only knew the reason for the call, they can't really do anything. The emergency service operators are some of the unsung heroes of our world, so I think we should make their jobs a little easier by getting to the most important stuff as quickly as possible. Help them, help us, as the saying goes. Number 7. Thunderstorm Etiquette some people really hate thunder. I mean, they really hate it. But others seem to love the whole theatrical, dramatic effect that thunder and lightning bring to the night sky. So what is the right way to handle this sometimes terrifying thing? Let's find out. The big note, of course, is that you shouldn't be outdoors when a thunderstorm is in motion. Always, wherever possible, stay indoors during an intense storm, and pay attention to all of the alerts and warnings you may get during this period. Experts also recommend that you avoid driving or venturing through flooded roadways. Be careful around trees and power lines, both before and after the storm. In fact, the guidelines suggest you should be cautious of pretty much any tall object until the storm has fully passed. which honestly just seems like good life advice. Once the storm has passed and everything has calmed down, report any fallen power lines and trees to local authorities. They will ensure that the blockage is removed and safety is restored to the community before any serious incidents or injuries can be caused. In essence, all official guidelines are about staying away from anything that can cause injury, which is basic life advice. Basically, just don't go outside, ever. Number 6. Getting Lost in a Forest Here's a bizarre and intriguing fact. When mushroom season starts, the number of people that get lost in the forest increases. Why do you think that is? Foraging? A magic mushroom trip gone horribly wrong? Both? Eh, probably both. But here's what to do if you happen to get lost in the forest. As soon as you get lost and give up trying to pretend you're not, the very first thing you should do is look for water. Generally, that means you should go down. The one exception to the rule, if you're in a swamp, you'll want to go in the opposite direction which according to the dictionary is up. But if neither of that advice is helpful, here's a very good tip. Look to the birds. If the birds are flying high, they're probably moving toward the water. Flying low, they're flying from it. 
Either way, they're higher than you, so you'll be making guesses, but it's better than being lost. Once you follow the bird's direction, you'll likely come across some kind of water reserve. From there, you'll be able to find a path that leads to a road, and then you're on your way back to human civilization. Follow the birds! Except in winter, that is, you'll just end up south, and that's probably not where you want to be. Number 5. When a diabetic loses consciousness. Hypoglycemia. Anybody that knows or loves someone with diabetes knows what it is. Dangerous. Hypoglycemia is what happens when blood sugar drops to an abnormally low level. Suffice to say, it's not good. It's never good. But how can you tell? If you're aware that someone is a diabetic, you should be aware of the signs that come with hypoglycemia. They can include giddiness, sweating, cold or moist skin, a fast or irregular heartbeat, difficulty speaking, anxiety, crankiness, or if the hypoglycemia has worsened, you should expect more severe side effects like blurred vision, confusion, loss of consciousness, even seizures. It's not unheard of for untreated hypoglycemia to escalate to the point of coma or even death. But thankfully, many trained experts know what to look for and are able to advert that worst-case scenario before too late. In terms of how to save the life of someone suffering hypoglycemia, the advice is generally to seek out help from experts. Hypoglycemia is typically treated with medication, but, and we can't stress this enough, nobody except a professional doctor or pharmacist should be prescribing or supplying medications, no matter what the condition may be. Call the emergency services and save a life. Don't try to be a hero. Number 4. Diving into water. There is a unique pain that comes when water enters the nostrils. It's, it's weirdly hard to describe, but it feels like you just stuck a water jet in your brain. Obviously, that's not what's happening here, but how exactly can you dive into water without feeling like you're about to die? We have a secret. The reason water gets into our noses is pretty simple. They are big, open holes, but the scientific reason is a little more nuanced. Apparently, it's because of a difference in pressure between our sinuses and the water. If you were to close the sinus cavity, the air pressure would block the water from getting in. Or to summarize it another way, it works exactly how you thought it would. But here's a little hack to close the sinus cavity and keep that pressure constant. Okay, you ready? You just press your tongue against the soft palate and make a K sound. Your nose and mouth feel kind of separated. While your tongue is there now, you can't blow out of your nose as long as your tongue is there. If you do that, water won't get up there. At least, that's what the experts told me. There is the chance that this is a prank that just got out of hand. Number 3. Putting out a grease fire. Home fires can be caused by anything when you really stop to think about it. Irons, toasters, getting so drunk you put a DVD in the microwave. I mean, there's no end to the dangers around the home, but a grease fire? the worst of it all. Yeah, even worse than a microwave DVD. According to statistics, cooking causes over 160,000 home fires every single year, and it's commonly considered the number one cause of injuries in the home. Of those 160,000 cooking fires, it's estimated that around two-thirds of them were started with the ignition of food or other cooking materials. That's code for grease fire. Here's what to do when a grease fire kicks up. Cover the flames with a metal lid or sheet tray and don't take it off until the fire is over. Turn off the heat source and if it's a small fire, smother it with something. If the fire is too big, get a fire extinguisher, obviously. Do not and and we cannot stress this enough, try to extinguish the fire with water or try to move the flaming pot outside. That's gonna guarantee you a trip to the emergency room, and you don't wanna be no hands Joe. It's not fun. Number two, a wild animal encounter. 
Imagine for a second you're admiring the wonderful world of nature. While you cherish the gentle breeze and try to ignore the crying baby, you see a squirrel. What do you do? You pet it. Bad move, though. It attacked you and now you have rabies. Do you see the problem here? Never ignore the crying baby. Oh, and you know, maybe don't play with wild animals. Any wild animal scratch or bite has the potential to lead to rabies. You have around 10 to 15 days to disinfect the wound and consult a doctor before things get very, very bad. And I'm not kidding when I say very, very bad. Every single hour that passes is an hour lost. Your chance of survival is dwindling. If too much time has passed, rabies is incurable even if you somehow pull off an amazing fun run for the cure. So consider this a full warning. If you see an animal in the wild, the best thing you can do is just let it get on with its business. It doesn't pay to try and be Steve Irwin, not only because he was one of a kind, but because the human body is a little bit like a water balloon. Our bodies are just fragile flabby vessels for stuff. One bad hit and we're just bursting out all over the place. Number 1. CPR the two best skills you can learn, without a doubt, are the Heimlich Maneuver and CPR. In fact, if you're a Bee Gees fan, you're probably further along with the CPR training than anybody else. Great news for those raised in the 70s. Everyone else? Eh, you can probably get a CPR expert in an Uber. Everybody already knows the basic rules of CPR. Hard and fast chest compressions on the person who's unconscious, preferably to the beat of the Bee Gees classic, Stayin' Alive, a song which was definitely selected based on its title, but there's another rule, possibly the most important of all. If you've performed CPR and the person just isn't coming to, and the ambulance is on the way, don't stop with the compressions. The point of CPR isn't necessarily about getting the person back to life, it's about preserving the flow of oxygen to the brain until the professionals arrive. If you were to simply stop or give up, the person would have no chance of survival, the brain simply wouldn't get enough oxygen. So if if you ever find yourself in a CPR situation, keep pumping until help finally arrives. It may be the only way to save someone's life. Have you ever saved a life? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.